Marcus Conti reporting. Today is uh, February 25th, 2019. Let's talk about Venezuela. Let's jump right into the shit, right into this. So, well, let me, I just will preface. So, uh, Mike Pompeo, the deep state spook, also called the Secretary of State of the United States, is running his CIA false flag operation in Venezuela to overthrow the government. Let's listen to what he had to say on Sunday news. Before he heads off to Vietnam, the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Chris, it's great to be with you. Before we get to the Kim Summit, I want to ask you about the developing situation in Venezuela. Some small amount of aid did get through, and reportedly some 60 members of the Venezuelan National Guard defected to the opposition. But... Generally speaking, Maduro's forces stood firm and stood by him. Is that a disappointment? Chris, the Venezuelan people are speaking loudly and clearly. They understand. The people of Venezuelan people are not speaking loudly and clearly. They're speaking, they're speaking loudly and clearly, clearly for Maduro. So let's just get it straight, fucko. Understand that Juan Guaido is the legitimate president of their country. Wrong. Uh, we're supporting that. Uh, the Lima Group, the OAS, European countries all around the world have seen the devastation that's been wrought. Let's in play it again. Listen to him lie, okay? Wake up. Chris, the Venezuelan people are speaking loudly and clearly. They understand that Juan Guaido is the legitimate president of their country. False, right? There's the Secretary of, the, of, uh, uh, Secretary of State. It's deep... <laughs> Deep state spook, a CIA guy hired by Trump to, to, to muddy the waters. He's lying to you. Uh, we're supporting that, uh, the Lima Group, the OAS. You're Maduro is the elected president, not Guardo. There's no evidence on the ground that the majority of the people want Guardo. Only the U.S. coup wants it. European countries all around the world have seen the devastation that's been wrought in Venezuela by this sick tyrant, Maduro, who's denying food to starving Venezuelans and medicine to... He's, listen to what he says. Uh, the Lima Group, the OAS, European countries all around the world have seen the devastation that's been wrought in Venezuela by this sick tyrant, Maduro, who's denying food to starving Venezuelans and medicine to sick Venezuelans, burning trucks with... Uh, this, this, this is the, the worst of the worst of a tyrant. I think the Venezuelan... So he's saying that because if you, if you uh, deny food and medicine to the people of Venezuela, you're a sick tyrant, right? But that's, that's the nature of sanctions. That's what sanctions are. The sanctions are in place to prevent the food and the medicine and, and basic supplies for getting into the country. U.S. is, is 100% behind that. Right? So who is the sick tyrant, right? You're, right? It's, just, it's just logical, right? He, he also says that, uh, that there's burning, tr that, the, that the opposition, the, the very, very few hungry people, uh, are actually the Maduro supporters are burning the U.S. enclave, the trucks full of supplies, right? And there's also evidence that the CIA is actually doing that themselves so that Pompeo can go on TV and say, see, they're burning the trucks. Some people are seeing that. We saw yesterday the military begin to see it as well. Some of this violence was clearly of these collectivos, these gangs, while uh, the military wasn't as certain they wanted to lean into this violence. We're very hopeful in the days and weeks and months ahead, uh, the Maduro regime will understand that the Venezuelan people have made its days numbered. In a statement at the end of yesterday, you said the United States will take action. What does that mean? We've already taken action, action to support the Venezuelan people, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, they have a duly elected interim president, Mr. Guaido. We're going to continue to support him. We'll continue. It's a lie. He's not duly elected. He's not elected. He's a fucking, he's a plant. All right. This is, this is Trump's guy. Wake up. You know, the American people have been most generous, providing a couple hundred tons of food, medicine, hygiene kits for the Venezuelan people. And then we'll continue to build out the global coalition to put, to put, force behind the voice of the Venezuelan people. What's happened there is a tragedy. There were uh, five or six or eight killed yesterday, uh, but there have been hundreds and hundreds killed from starvation over the past weeks and months. Millions of people having to flee their homes. Three million people have had to leave. Ten percent 
of the Venezuelan population. That, those are the actions of the American people and the Trump administration to support democracy in Venezuela. But no military force. We've said every option's on the table. We're going to do the things that need to be done to make sure that the Venezuelan people's voice, that democracy reigns, and that there's a brighter future for the people of Venezuela. All right, let's turn to... <laughs> I guess he gets, a, he gets the Academy Award for that one. I didn't watch last night, but that's an Academy Award right there. Hey, shut No. 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 I got ads running. <laughs> so, No. So Pompeo is on national television, lying his ass off. Deep state spook, head of the FBI, causing, a, uh, causing all kinds of turmoil at the border in Venezuela, right? So what, uh, what, let's, look, let's look further, right? So here's, uh, here's some RT reporting. This is pretty good, too. We'll talk more about it. RT's doing a great job on it. Everybody saw those uh, those images of the trucks ramming the border. That was uh, apparently Guardo's crowd. But pro- pro- for Maduro's crowd was blocking the the supplies to come in, and Guardo, the defectors, the quote, uh, uh, you know, the the regime, the regime change. He had his guys run the people over. So they're instigating violence at the border. That's what's happening. It's a coup, people. It's a coup. It's a CIA operation. It's getting ugly. That's precisely what Pompeo and Trump and Abrams and Bolton want. It's working. And as the violence intensifies and the U.S. ramps up its anti-Maduro rhetoric, there are concerns that a direct intervention in Venezuela is now on the cards. Here's RT's Nikki Aaron. While aid is usually the key to alleviating suffering, this weekend's events may be doing the exact opposite. The determination to get Washington's aid across the border in the face of President Maduro's refusal was, it turns out, the catalyst to push the delicate situation in Venezuela into bloody clashes. The bottom line is this. When you have uh, food, right, you have, you have poor people in the country, right? No one's denying that Venezuela is in a bad place for whatever reason, right? And when you have, if you, if you just round up the most hungry people, and say, you know, uh, uh, go get, you know, there's trucks, truckloads of food coming in, right? Hungry people will fight for truckloads of food regardless of political, you know, position. But again, it's, it, the U.S. is causing it because of the sanctions. Without the sanctions, things could, humanitarian aid could flow right in, right? You can, you can take a diplomatic approach to what is going on in Venezuela. Why are... Why is it an oil-rich country and there's, there's um, a shit economy? Who's stealing the money? Where is the money going? What the fuck is wrong, right? Not, I mean, again, look, as well, if the U.S., if all they're going to do is demand free elections, demand more elections, what makes you think that, that they're not the people, they're already overwhelmingly for Maduro? Why, they're going to vote him in again. And then what? You're going to have another Hamas, right? Hamas and well, you say, oh, free and fair elections in, in Palestine, in the, you know, in, in the Gaza, Gaza Strip, right? And then, and then they have the elections, and, and guess what? Fucking Hamas wins, and then you don't recognize it. You call them terrorists. So, the, so the, the idea that you're, gonna have, that you're calling for more elections when they already had elections is not a solution. It's, it's escalating the problem. Tons of U.S. aid had piled up at the Venezuela border in what Maduro had called a U.S. orchestrated show designed to induce international condemnation from the dozens of nations siding with opposition leader Juan Guaido. Concerns that the aid deliveries could contain weapons were not completely unfounded, given previous U.S. endeavors. The Bolivian president and Maduro ally Eva Morales concurred, calling the cargo a Trojan horse to provoke war. So just how Guaido saw... That's how Abrams, Elliot Abrams and um, 
he was one of the another CIA spook, right? That they that's how they got the they get the weapons into the opposition party is through food aid, right? Once everything's fine, you know, the trucks are flowing in, they 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 start to smuggle in guns, right? So the Maduro regime is not they're not stupid. I'm going to play some interviews of actual people in Venezuela that are going to chirp in. I found some good stuff. So listen to this more. Things unfolding when he issued an ultimatum is unclear. Rallying his supporters en masse to bring the U.S. trucks across the border is undoubtedly a precarious position to put people in. Especially so, so the opposition force, they're rallying the, the hungry people to bring those, bring those that, that supply across the border where the military is standing in, in opposition to it. The, the, the Venezuelan military under Maduro, was saying, don't let it in because politically it's a mistake. Politically, it, it's going to harm us. Don't take money from the bad guy, right? It's, it's a bribe. It's like, it's like taking money from the, it's like the mafia. It's like, yeah, we'll give you a little bit here. We'll give you something, and then, and then we own you. That's essentially what's going on. And Maduro's saying, don't do it. Especially when the military remains loyal to the president. Naturally, it resulted in this. <laughs> Hungry people saying, bring in the food. Can't blame them. Look for Maduro looking increasingly bleak. Attention has now turned to those who continue to support him. The Venezuelan military are being urged to abandon their loyalties and choose the side of Washington. Venezuela's military has a choice. Embrace democracy, protect civilians, and allow in humanitarian aid. Or face even more sanctions and isolation. So there's John Bolton, right? John Bolton, the guy leading the charge, Trump's man with the mustache leading the charge. Venezuela ha has, Venezuela's military has a choice, allow in aid or face more sanctions and isolation, right? More, starve them out, make them even more hungry, right? They're, they're starving now, make them even more hungry. That's a great idea. That's a great fucking solution. I, I, I got I to gotta agree. It's a great way to go. I'm proud. Round of applause from their new commander in chief for any should hang this guy right on the right side of history because causing unnecessary pain and suffering is nowhere near as nauseating as the sight of US trucks going up in flames it seems We denounce Maduro's refusal to let humanitarian assistance reach Venezuela What kind of a sick tyrant stops food from getting to hungry people The images of burning trucks filled with aid are sickening so there's, there's speculation that, that Pompeo is actually burning the trucks in a CIA kind of false flag operation. Right? Is it, is it, there's, there's actually a foreign minister that's going to say that that's what's going on. Right? But uh, that's Pompeo again. He's calling Maduro a tyrant for, for starving his people or because people are hungry, Maduro's a tyrant. Meanwhile, the U.S. is, is, is stealing their oil money, is, is, is preventing the... the preventing free trade in the country. Sanctions. The misgivings and finger-pointing over who might be to blame for the burning trucks was quickly picked up on by Venezuela's Watch foreign this. minister, who issued a stark reminder of his U.S. counterpart's past as head of the CIA. Secretary Pompeo, CIA specialist in false flag operations, believes he fools the world with a truck burned in Colombia by his own agents. All right, so <laughs> look at that. Look at that statement right there. There's the there's the uh, foreign there's the Venezuelan agent whatever whoever he is right. CIA special specialist in false flag operations. That's Pompeo. That's your Secretary of State. That Trump. That's Trump's right hand man. Trump cleaning draining out the swamp. Here we here we go. Believes his fools believes he fools the world with a truck burned in Colombia by his own agents. Cannot make it up. The truck burned in Colombia by his own agents. With tensions in Venezuela rumbling for months, Guaido's deadlock. Uh, let's look at let's look at some of the uh, these are people. Quien quiera paz, quien se sienta venezolano, quien realmente quiera su país en paz sin guerra, tiene que venir a firmar a la Plaza Bolívar. La invitación que hago es que vayamos a la Plaza Bolívar a recolectar las firmas que le llevaremos al Imperio Norteamericano para demostrar que 
en Venezuela, aunque tengamos problemas como cualquier país del mundo, solamente lo vamos a resolver los venezolanos, sin intervención, sin guerra, con paz, con alegría, que son características de la revolución bolivariana. Y nosotros como militantes sabemos muy bien de cómo movilizarnos y cómo defender esta patria de Bolívar y Chávez. Y aquí está un pueblo que está presto al llamado y atendiendo las necesidades de un pueblo para garantizar la paz. Entonces, muchísimas gracias, compañera. So she's saying that the only the only way it's there's a there's a bright young person saying that the only way that Venezuela is going to help itself is through its own people. Uh, they're not they're, they're opposition. They don't want the fucking Americans coming in there running their show. Es una lucha muy dura y es una lucha larga, pero hemos decidido que no somos esclavos ya. Proud. ¿Y qué recuerda de los años antes de que vino Chávez al poder? Un gran deterioro de la autoestima venezolana. Chávez. Our, our esteem had dwindled greatly before Chávez 99. Before Chávez 99. It was already in decay. Why? Because the U.S. government was fucking crushing their oil. A country 95% dependent on oil had the big oil companies... Getting in the way, had their foot in the door. You don't believe it? Well, believe it. Chávez significó para Venezuela la recuperación del poquitico de autoestima que nos quedaba. Eso significó so Chávez la recuperación Chavez represented for Venezuela del poquitico de autoestima que nos quedaba. That he had Eso left. significó Chávez. Nos ayudó a ser was. venezolanos nuevamente. Nos ayudó a comprender que somos... He helped us become Venezuela again. Now... Again, the United States is blaming Chavez for all of the problems, right? And then Maduro, that Maduro in, inherited. And meanwhile, the people on the ground are telling you the exact opposite. Que somos parte de la humanidad. Estamos execrados de la humanidad por la reducción de nuestra... You guys are jerk off say, oh, it's fucking guys, somebody paid them to say that. They're paying them to say that. Mente, al, eh, por el... Eh, víctimas del proceso consumista. Ah. Y presidente Maduro, ¿votó usted por él en 2013 y el año pasado? Sí, como no, yo voto por el presidente Maduro. Of course, I voted for Maduro. Maduro significó el salto cualitativo, independientemente de, de su gestión. Si yo no estoy de acuerdo, no estoy de acuerdo con muchas cosas, con muchas cosas... Eh, de Chávez tampoco estaba de acuerdo, pero sigo respaldándolo y sigo solidario con ellos porque forman, porque su contenido programático, el, el contenido de sus de su trabajos, sus propuestas, me significan muchísimo para mí porque rescatan gran parte de mis preocupaciones y de, mi, y de mis valores. ¿Y si los Estados Unidos tratara de mandar tropas o armas a la... Read the question. If the U.S. sent troops or arms to the opposition, uh, opposition, will we wait for them? We are ready. Because die for the fight. Now, if anybody could can say that this guy isn't right, right, that that the homeland is being invaded, and we will fight. I love this guy. Let's start him again. Let's give him this whole fucking time. Give him this five minutes. Y si los Estados Unidos tratara de mandar tropas o armas a la oposición. Lo esperaremos y estaremos pendientes porque aquí vamos a morir con rodilla en tierra luchando por nuestra patria. Nuestra patria tenemos que defender la capa y espada como sea. Pero nosotros no nos vamos a escribillar en cano de rodilla a pedirle que no. Señor, como quieran, quiero. Reporting for Liberation News. All right, so there you go, man. That's some crazy ass shit, right? So that, so, so, so you heard, you heard in their own words, right? People defending the homeland, a uh, homeland, right? For for the United States, it's just a game. It's just a big money and oil game, right? Get there, get in there, destabilize the country, send in the this. Sending the hungriest people to, to get in the way and get killed and slaughtered. And say, so they can say, see, see, they're killing each other. They were, first they're eating, there's nothing to eat, and now they're killing each other to get to the food. That we have the food. It's like, it's like you know, dangling uh, uh, you know, food in front of a hungry animal, right? 
that's the strategy. That's that's your government in action. All right, thank you. I, lo- I love it, man. I'm I'm totally, I'm totally on board with all this. So Marcus Conti reporting on uh, Venezuela today. If you kindly become a Patreon, if you're still with me, <laughs> I know a lot of the uh, the Trumpsters are 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 upset that their that their hero that their icon is failing them in the realization that 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 it's it was all a farce. So you know what happened in 2008. When the tried and true that voted for Obama got screwed, got their asses pounded, right? They they hurt, and then by 2011 they revolted, and that was Occupy Wall Street. So so the Trump people are about six months to a year before they realize that they've been totally fucked by a con man and a you know and a and a TV show actor, right? Because let's call it what it is, right? Because that's what it is now. Now now it's getting dangerous now. You've got the same guy, but now you've got even worse. You've got an aggressive, you know, uh, uh, beta personality in Trump now invading, you know, invading uh, sovereign nations, not offering help. Not that they're in there to destabilize, get the oil, and 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 uh, and call it a day. Uh, so kindly become a, a patron. <laughs> While you're here, we're just getting started. Like I said, this is, um, this is, we're staying the truth. Stay with me, stay in the truth. I'm Marcus Conti reporting.